says that the hypertext protection systems so it's kind of good for us because it says that we're right, right? It's just kind of a, an API uh, that does precisely what we tell you, uh, the hypermedia guys tell you to do. Um, but it's not really what currently we're doing. I mean, most people do not do uh, hypermedia information systems. Right? Your backend system is not a hypermedia information system. We're using HTTP or JSON over HTTP. Uh, over systems that are not internally, that their internal semantics are not that of a hypermedia information system. They're doing, you know, event registration, something like that. They have other artifacts. And, uh, and again, and if we, we kind of uh, talk about what APIs are and the definition, so it's kind of like, you know, the, 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 the acronym is Advanced Programming Interface or um, uh, the other one, uh, application programming interface. So it's kind of, when you say application programming interface, it means uh, it's a way for a program to mechanize uh, another program, to, to program another program. Um, and, and, and basically, it's kind of just a way to invoke a method on an object. An API is just that. It's there somewhere, uh, so no, we're, we're in late 2014. So it's a way to, pla to pass an argument to a function, which is better. I don't know if anyone understands that specific troll. But, um, uh, uh, um, and, and the reason kind of we're talking to you all the time about REST and uh, about uh, hypermedia is that uh, uh, it's extremely useful. So it's just back to Steve's uh, talk. If we all do uh, the, the, the hypermedia REST thing, Life for everyone will be much simpler, and there are beneficial side effects because, uh, as uh, the earlier talk suggested, we are running on top of the hugest infrastructure ever managed by humanity. So there are more things in, in, in the web sphere than anywhere else. So we have uh, uh, billions of lines of code just to do that, probably billions of lines of code, that, and, and they, so uh, a, a lot of those are the same ones, so a lot of us use the same code, but just duplicate it many times, so we have Nginx and we have Google Web Server and a lot of uh, other technologies that, that really scale extremely well, and which makes it a very good idea to be using, uh, and so it's a good thing. But. Uh, there's always a but. Everything has semantics. And, and this has kind of already emerged um, uh, in, in the two previous talks, right? That uh, one saying, okay, we need more semantics, right? We don't have even, we, everything has semantics, but we need much more of these semantics. We need to understand better what data is, what stuff does, in order for it to be uh, automated. And uh, in Steve's talk, it was kind of, okay, oh these are the semantics I like. I want to put uh, uh, the, the correct, simple semantics, and that will allow me to uh, efficiently interconnect two systems, two specific systems, kind of Amber and Rails, although the, the, each of them will be probably something that is bespoke. Uh, and I want this to be as general, uh, as, general as possible um, and, and what I uh, posit is that uh, kind of the, the, uh, the intermediaries, uh, in intermediary semantics have a cost. Uh, and, and it's kind of, uh, um, we guys kind of yell at you guys all the time. And, and, and we're saying, you shouldn't use post for that. And how, and, and kind of, I am, um, how many uh, of, of you guys, uh, the, the really clean, good ones, the believers, how many of you return a 203 non-authoritative uh, answer, response from your proxy servers? Uh, no, not often, uh, although anything else would be a lie. The proxy does not know. Uh, it's gonna, well, I can't, I can't really give you an answer because basically I, I, I have an SLA and I will always respond to you in 300 milliseconds and I don't even know if the backend will time out or not. It may respond later with a different response and I did about response. And again, this is a good thing, right? 
I mean, I mean the, the fact that we have the, such extreme scalable semantics for caching over HTTP means we can scale this whole thing and we have millions and billions of people using it. It's a good thing. It's not always a good thing. So th there, are, there will be use cases in which uh, uh, the thing is not a good thing. So basically, uh, as said before, APIs are kind of bridges between two systems. And, uh, and we're using kind of, as a middleware, JSON over HTTP. And we're inheriting the, uh, the semantics uh, of JSON over HTTP in this translation, in this bridge. Uh, so, kind of, uh, uh, basically, the, 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 the thing that happens every time is that we'll have an app one, a middleware, which will be the API, the transport layer, and the protocol layer together, and, uh, and the serialization, of course. And, and so, we have kind of a worldview one, the way a system understands the world, its ontology, its semantics, its concepts, a way for it to translate that into uh, uh, intermediary form, like JSON API. Then it goes away to the other side, it gets unserialized, it gets read by the other system, and it gets translated so the client uh, is ne can never be uh, uh, totally automatic and automatic, because if it can do the basic you know, mechanics of, okay, I can you know, kind of go over the response, and this is a link, and I can get the comments now for my blog post, and, and this doesn't require more code. Understanding what is a comment and how it's represented in the other system is something that will require either code or, or, or more magic. Um, so I, I'll do a trick. You, you know the trick, you know, it's kind of fun when you take a text and you put it in Google Translate, and then you translate it in language, and then you translate it back to the same language. And it used to be kind of, whoa, and now it kind of works. Uh, and so I'll, I'll translate the text that was two slides before. So this goes uh, from English to Yiddish to English. Um, as the request. Um. So, uh, and, so, tak tak. So reading would be worldview one. Worldview one is represented as JSON over HTTP. Worldview one is represented in worldview two. This is a phrase. And when we see that, well, it kind of works quite well, right? So worldview one, worldview one is represented as JSON over HTTP. Worldview one is that kind of really work, and it just changes a bit here. Reading would be, and then and writing would be, and it, it's kind of Yiddish is very. Uh, um, Good language. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the same trick now with Hebrew. So you don't see here, right? I didn't show you the Yiddish or Hebrew representation because when you're using an API, you never see basically the, the intermediate representation. Its semantics are something that uh, uh, you consider to be, to be transparent. Uh, and in Hebrew, this will be. Reading will be view in one, world view one, as represented as JSON over HTTP, and will wrote. Okay, we're kind of fucked. So, uh, um, uh, so basically what happened here is that we've seen the semantic difference between two uh, Indo-European languages. Yiddish is a Indo-European language. Its serialization format, by the way, is the same as Hebrew. So you use the same character set. Uh, so it's not a problem of the serialization format. It's really, well, that uh, it's been trained. So I'm, this is totally false. So basically, uh, the only reason for which this happens like that is that there's less Yiddish text that has translations and stuff. So the, you know, the machine learning algorithm didn't have time to train. But it makes my point, so who cares? Um, so Let's say that it's because <laughs> that there is a larger semantic difference, uh, and it, there is, between two Indo-European languages and an Indo-European language and a Semitic one. So uh, 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 one of the things that semantics deal with, going back to, uh, is, and, and it's weird because it's kind of the ontological question, right? The ontology thing of what is semantics is what a thing means. And ontology is what a thing is, what is isness, uh, on, on tos in, in, in Greek. And, um, and there are, in hypermedia HTTP, in the HTTP world, 
in a way, there is an idea about what a thing is. A thing is an address of a thing. So you, you reference, you say, being there is what defines a thing. And uh, what am I saying? Now? And, and by the way, that, so this is a kind of, uh, and maybe you have been uh, surprised many times seeing hypermedia serializations that contain the self relation. So it's kind of weird because I just got you from this address. I know you're that. Why are you saying, yeah, I'm that? And, and you, you, you can see kind of the, the general usefulness of this because if I don't say self, one, all of the caching thing and the fact that I have a distributed system will break, but also it's really what my identity, myself, my ID is my URL. If I give you ID one, it doesn't mean a thing. If I give you slash blog post slash one, that's me. And uh, uh, we have other kind of uh, computer systems in the world, uh, like Git. So uh, all of the non-technical people not knowing what Git is, please raise your hands. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, crowd. So uh, uh, in Git, uh, Git is a content addressable system, like uh, some others, like you know, BitTorrent and stuff like that. So basically, the address of a thing is a hash function over its content. So it's the thing by itself. So again, if you go to and, and read the uh, kind of, uh, philosophers and, and kind of this, this, the, the ontological question is what is a thing by itself? From what are its internal properties? And Git says, I don't know. It's just itself, and I have a function that will allow me to address it. So Git only has basically three things. So it has commits, and commits are basically these hash functions over blobs. And there's a special kind of blob that is the tree. So it's basically the relationships between commits that uh, allow us to construct afterwards a file system and something that represent, would represent, for example, code. Um, uh, OK, I said that. Uh, so now there's another, you know, so, uh, and it's a, a, a kind of a, a weird, I'm saying a weird because it's all. So there's one thing this is, is what is the thing? And the other question is how do I talk about the thing? So this is the referencing issue. How do I, I say, so we've understood kind of how the thing by itself is, but by itself it's, not, it's usually not useful. Right? It's when things can reference other things that they become useful. In, in HTTP, it's basically kind of, a, a f we've said it's a function call, so it's, it's very close to what a promise would be. So it's a function call that is cached locally and will be called later. And in HTTP, we never know what precisely the response would be. Not only uh, it may change over time, it's a good thing it changes over time. So when I get uh, slash post slash one in a web page, I will get it with the most recent comments. This will change over time, and we consider it to be a good thing. So we, it's still a thing, but it's a thing that changes over time. Only for some APIs, uh, uh, that thing is not a good thing. So again, I'm not saying that uh, in most cases, this is a problem. In most cases, this is not a bug. This is a feature, the fact that uh, things change over time, uh, but in some systems, that would be a very, very bad thing. So the thing we're building is a pass, and a pass is, uh, um, well, something, platform as a service, you know, where you can deploy code, and it runs. Yeah, that's cool. And um, uh, uh, it's kind of the ultimate meta software, right? Because it's a program that is supposed to be able to run any other program, or it's not a pass. And the problem is that in order for a program to be able to run any other program, stuff needs to be predictable. Anyway, these days, until we have some other 
cool technologies. But for the moment, you know, uh, I don't know, you, when you commit your, your thing to a code repository, usually you do and you should, when it goes into production, commit the lock file, the thing that describes its dependencies, because you don't want it to change over time. You want to be able to deploy precisely the same thing. And even that lock file doesn't defend you. Everybody needs to behave. All package managers need to behave quite nicely. And they never need, you know, kind of never have any problems and never uh, be down. The servers running them should never be down in order to be able to be sure you are doing totally repeatable deploys. And yet software is change, right? We're, uh, uh, so, so there's the, the, this uh, uh, basic uh, uh, tension between the idea that I want to have stuff that never changes and is always totally the same. So something that like a content addressable system that addresses the, the thing I'm going to deploy by its byte level content is a good thing. And yet I want to be able to manage change over time, just not in the way HTTP semantics would push me to do that. So it's, it's gonna, you might get latest version now, if not cached and the e tag and the very headers and nobody knows. Um, so uh, uh, this is why when kind of when thinking what would be the basic API of my pass system, I would say uh, uh, we want something that has more like Git semantics. So that has extremely precise semantics for change and that has a lot of state. Not having state here would be a very, very bad thing because when I want to deploy several hundred servers with a specific change, uh, the statelessness of HTTP might not be fun. If I need to revert mid-change this whole thing, uh, I would probably need to, go to do some very, very complicated, not nice stuff to get it done. Um, uh, so uh, basically, uh, uh, kind of what we do in, in our pass uh, is something cool. So you have a Git repository that will represent your running cluster. You would say git checkout minus b, my new cool feature, git push origin, new cool feature. And what would happen is not uh, I put code on a server. This is not the semantics, right? The, the semantics of this uh, minus b thing, create a new branch, uh, is clone right, the code base. And I'm using the same semantics to say clone my infrastructure. Um, so I'm, I'm saying, uh, 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 so basically what would happen when you've pushed to master, you will have an identical production cluster running. So I, I can clone a running production. And so this is not precisely what you would expect, right? This is not what you, Git usually does. This is a new feature that has nothing to do basically with Git. This is about server deployment. And I'm just re reusing Git as a protocol. And it's precisely the same way when uh, you kind of imagine HTT an HTTP application. So basically, all of our hypermedia stuff with the post and put and delete was done for WebDAV, right? For a specific application that just puts real static files on a server. This is where all of our uh, semantics come from, manipulating files on a remote server. But we're not expecting that, right? When we do a, a, a put, we're expecting an application, a program, to take this and translate these semantics and say, I understand put in the same general sense as replacing a thing that was there. But then there will be extremely complex code that will be other shit, that will be other stuff with that. And uh, uh, so um, uh, uh, what, what I'm trying to, to co communicate is that Git, like HTTP, like many other protocols and serializations, I think, can be used a, as an API level protocol. We can use it to mechanize other uh, uh, programs, and sometimes with simpler, better semantics. So just so you would be clear, when I do my git checkout B and, and, and all of that, when I'm cloning an infrastructure, I am not dumping databases to the file system, committing them into get, that would be madness. That would be bad. What I'm doing is running software that is capable of doing that. I'm just reusing Git as a protocol. I'm just reusing, reusing its semantics like we do with HTTP. 
And so that's what I said. Um, uh, but as you would imagine, uh, if you'd like kind of to develop now against that thing, your web UI, this would be basically possible because, as you might know, uh, Git also talks. It has the dumb protocol, which works o over HTTP and which, which is like a bit hypermediation by itself. So there is a well-known URL. You go to info slash refs, and then you get kind of list of references, and then you can just go and fetch them one by one. You will have to implement a lot of client-side logic, and you will not have access basically to all of the higher level abstractions you might have uh, in Git. So uh, evidently, uh, uh, you would like once you've done something like that and used a better protocol to wrap it in something that will be extremely useful and like to build a web UI. So uh, uh, um, uh, uh, evidently, on top of uh, this, uh, uh, okay, we you can't see anything here. It's, oh, always a problem with reveal. Um, so evidently, we, we kind of on top of these semantics, the only real server, the only real API is Git. You cannot mechanize the system by anything else. You just have to describe to it the state of the world, and it needs to conform the world to what you have described. But once you've done that, there is no problem of putting a proxy on top of it that will translate now these Git semantics to this other world and try to do something extremely useful. And in our case, you can... Oh, can I... Oh, no. Mm, yeah. Okay, so, uh, uh, and, uh, so I'll just, uh, mm. uh, uh, so, so basically, the, 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 this will be about kind of bridging the, the impedance mismatch between the semantics world. And one of the things that often enough people have problem with doing oh, in, in hypermedia ra uh, 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 rest uh, is doing long running transactions. So transactions are already a, a, a complicated thing. And doing long-running transactions are really, really complicated because we have to deal with timeouts that will be uh, in the middle. So if you're running, on, for, for example, on Amazon, you will not get any transaction running for more than 60 seconds over HTTP because ELB, uh, Elastic Load Balancer, drops. We don't know why. It drops connections after 60 seconds. And uh, uh, so here kind of the semantics would be Okay, if I'm telling you uh, to do something, I will return to you an activity stream, kind of a stream of activities around that, that you will be able at the same time to consume with server sent events or something like that, really HTTP, -ish, so you can forward it to your web page. Okay, I'm, uh, I'll just do an extremely short demo. Uh -huh. Oh, please. Where's the... Okay, the thing with the thing is that the thing doesn't work. Uh, oh, oh, here's the thing. Sorry. So I'll, I'll, I'll just do a single commit. Oh, sorry, suffering. So... Uh, 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 I cannot see anything. What the? Uh, fuck me. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, This, this should be the, the kind of the fun part, is that uh, uh, you're getting precisely the same thing in a web page, uh, and, in, and, and in your command line. And this is just Git, right? This is I, I'm not using any specific client. This is a magic client that does my new semantics that allows me to to mechanize an application it was not supposed to, and and kind of just works. Uh, because we were able to bridge. Oh, fuck me. 
Okay, that's not. And so you could uh, basically see it blurred now. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is a new production cluster. Okay, thank you guys.